Hey, subscribers and YouTubers, Leadhead Terry here. Hey, welcome to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. What I'm going to show you today in this episode, I'm going to help you convert those old drum brakes to disc brakes. I'll show you all the tips, the tricks, everything you need to know to be successful. Thanks for watching. Okay, here's the kit from Scarebird. Included will be two backing plates here and here. You'll also get a bag of hardware. You'll also get seals for the hubs that are supplied. You'll get the inner bearings here. You'll get a set of outer bearings. You'll get two cups. And you'll also get instructions here, two pages of instructions. And you get a sticker. Here's the additional parts you'll need to complete this project. I ordered all of these from Napa as a convenience. I ordered two brake calipers. I ordered two brake lines. These are the 17 inch models. I ordered brake pads and two rotors. Okay, the whole plan here is to take off the dust cover, take out the outer wheel bearing, take off the drum, take off the hub as well, of course, uh, and then take off the backing plate and go all the way up and remove the existing hose. So this all comes off. Here are the two adjustment bolts that you're gonna be taking off here and here, with cotter pins on here, of course. Uh, remove those, take the nuts off. These are both uh, three quarter inch wrenches. Uh, and then what you'll do too here is to get your uh, wrench on here and, and turn these uh, clockwise and then counterclockwise. There, there's cams on the end of these bolts here that will compress the, uh, the brake shoes. And then also another tip is here's some fine adjustments up here as well that this one as well, you turn this one clockwise and then there's one on the other side way over here and you do the same thing, you go counterclockwise, just about a quarter turn. So that will uh, compress the brake shoes enough so you can pull the drum off easier. Alright, here's the two cams I was talking about before, and you can see I have them parted to the lower setting uh, against the brake shoe over here, so uh, this worked out really well.
Yeah, a quick check of the kingpin in here. Great shape. Uh, I feel no wobble or wiggle at all. Uh, you can tell that this has been lubricated over the years and will, really well maintained. So uh, that's some good news. Don't have to deal with any of the uh, kingpins this time. So good stuff. So now next I just have to clean all of this up, uh, get it prepared for the uh, disc brake backing plate. Okay, what we're going to do in this step is install the rear bearing and we're going to install the seal over it. What I recommend doing is getting your bearings here and then testing them on your spindle. Make sure they fit correctly. Okay, bearing is in and greased along with the seal. Okay, here's the calipers. Let's take a look and see what's in the box. They're semi-loaded. And they also come with the hardware. Here you have two copper washers for the brake line. You have a clip in here to hold on the brake pad. And then also you have the bolt for the brake line as well. And then inside here, you can see here we have a well lubricated uh, caliper. I'll wipe some of that off. I don't want any of that grease getting on the brake pads themselves. So I already did that on this one over here. Okay, here's the caliper, here's the brake pad, and here's the clip that comes along with it. So basically you find the, the clip that has the two little prongs on it right here. Mount it here, kind of hangs in here. Then that gently gets placed inside here and carefully gets snapped into place and held in there. So then next, you can hold in or push in, pull in, whatever you want to do here. You push in your different. There we go. So then also here's the other pad. This can get snapped into place down here. There we go. Okay, here's the brake line that I ordered, at least one of them. Uh, in the instructions, it does say to remove this bracket, no longer needed on this particular application. And then number two, I wanted to point out that on a 37 Plymouth Coupe, uh, the fitting on the other end of this for the steel brake line is too big. Actually, it's bigger than this fitting. So what I had to do was order and find one of these at Napa. Their part number is WH7818 to adapt this smaller fitting on here to the larger brake line fitting that is on the car. So note that uh, before you start, you may want to make sure that if you do have the larger fitting and larger brake lines on the car, uh, that you'll be able to obtain one of these uh, part numbers, WH7828, before uh, you begin. So uh, there is a solution, so I'll be able to install that in. Okay, here's my brake line I was just talking about. Here's the adapter as well. So this adapter will convert this larger brake line fitting to the smaller one that is needed on the new brake line. So this will fit in here. And again, this will fit in here. Uh, I also removed the bracket here just for clarity so you're able to see this. Okay, as you can see, I thoroughly cleaned off the spindle. It's all ready to go. Uh, next, we put on the backing plate. Uh, a couple of things to note. First of all, make sure that these nuts are facing outward. And number two, the caliper is facing the rear of the car. Then use the supplied hardware to mount it. The long bolt goes in the rear. And we have to also attach the uh, steering arm.
Okay, now we install the hub. Next we install the caliper, uh, noting that the bleed screw should face up. Okay, I did lubricate these. Okay, here's an issue I ran into now that I have it all assembled. Uh, what you'll see here is a little ridge way inside here on the hub, uh, between, of course, the hub and the actual rotor. Uh, so when I test fitted my tire and wheel, I noticed that this ridge right here uh, would get hung up on that lip. So what I did is looked at the original drum took a measurement here with my calipers and then came up here just to confirm and my suspicion, here we go, and I can see that this is too big. It's, it runs in there, so this is definitely bigger than what this wheel or this rim is accustomed to. So my plan here is to trim this a little bit with a grinder, just a little bit, shave off a little bit so it will clear that ridge. Okay, just ground away some of the material on the inside of the rim here, and that was able to now clear the ridge that was on the hub. Uh, so we're good to go. Works good, no issues. Uh, it's nice and solid. I'll do that to the other wheel as well. And remember to do it to your spare tire as well. Okay, with the wheel securely mounted using the lug nuts I had listed in the parts list I got from Napa, I just want to point out they're the same size as the lug bolt. Uh, that came originally on the car. So then I can use one lug wrench all the way around. Okay, now that I have the wheel mounted, I wanted to show you uh, some of the clearance I have. Of course, there is uh, plenty. And I also wanted to show you too that uh, I do have wheel weights on the inside on my rim here. Uh, I'm able to spin the wheel no problem. So using the standard original rims uh, is no problem with this kit. Okay, now that I have the disc brakes installed in the front, I wanted to finish up with the plumbing. First of all, I wanted to show you, uh, this is the master cylinder. Yes, it's just been replaced. I had already had one installed before I started this project, so I wanted to run it. So from there, you can see I put in new tubing all the way through, around the string box, and up into this T. This T splits it off to the front and rear. So what I did is I just made some brackets over here, mounted that T, and then you'll notice here, from the top here, this line goes to the rear. This is a 
two pound residual pressure valve that goes back to the original drum brakes. And then also part of the T branches off, goes all the way around here, goes into this two pound residual pressure valve. This continues to loop around and goes back into the original um, terminal here, the splitter here, this box, and then those two lines here go to the front disc brakes. So as you can tell here, I kind of redid and reused some of the existing uh, lines um, just to make sure I didn't have to modify anything. By going back to the master cylinder, I want to replace this in the future. So subscribe to my channel, you'll see me replace this uh, in the future and uh, it'll be a dual chamber uh, arrangement and uh, give me more separate um, braking power to the front and rear brakes. So the reason too that I installed the residual pressure valves is because this master cylinder is below the calipers. Uh, they said that I should do that to make sure that it doesn't, uh, the brake fluid doesn't siphon back into um, the reservoir in the master cylinder and keeps a little bit of pressure on those rear brakes as well. So I uh, hope this helps. Check out the brakes. Nice and straight. Nice and firm. Okay, I'm going about 45. In summary, overall, I really like this disc brake conversion. It really worked well, no major issues. It bolted right in. Uh, right now, the brake pedal feels good and strong. Uh, there's no pull. The brakes are smooth. Uh, I really, overall, am impressed with how well this brake job went. Uh, I hope you found this video uh, informative. Uh, if not, leave some comments down below. I appreciate that. Thanks for tuning in to my channel. Subscribe if you'd like. I got more videos coming. Appreciate it. Take care.